In this video, we'll see the difference between the traditional model and the new burnout model of the missiles in command. Now you'll see that we've launched a SAM-2 up in the general direction of that bogey. Just like a real missile, it's gonna pick up a tremendous amount of speed as it starts to uh, make its way up to the thicker er, and thinner part of the atmospheres, but eventually that motor is going to burn itself out and it's gonna require on just whatever um, momentum it has acquired during its flight in order to be able to successfully make it to its destination. So in this case, uh, the missile's traveling through, it's uh, still picking up a lot of speed as the air starts to go a little bit thinner, but in just a moment, the motor itself is going to burn out and it'll start coasting towards the target. Now, what you probably observe is our target right now is doing a 180 degree turn. Uh, the reason it is doing that is because it knows if it can build up enough speed, by the time the missile actually gets to them, the missile will have slowed down so much, it'll be impossible to actually catch. So in this case, you can see our bogey is now accelerated up well through Mach 1 there. And our missiles, now that the motors have burned out, are completely incapable of chasing our bogey. Now this is handled completely automatically. Our aircraft that was shot at here obviously needs to know that they've been engaged with the missile system. They also need to be able to um, be able to have performance great enough to be able to pull off this maneuver. Now things change around a little bit in the event that the weapon is a little bit closer when it is fired at our bogey. In which case you're going to get a very different response, just like you would from a regular pilot. And you can see very clearly our bogey is actually slowing down, only on account of the fact those SAMs have pretty much lost all their energy at this point. So now they can start turning and making their way back towards their original target that was protected by those SAMs. Oops, starting to pick up a little bit of speed again. Again, starting to put a little bit of a crank on it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if we fire at a shorter distance. Now our SAM here is um, going to be at full bore when it arrives at that target. You can see our target, instead of turning itself around and trying to run, in which case it would be badly outmatched by the missile, it's instead going to attempt to move her, move her to get a little bit of space between it and the missile, and then just like a regular pilot, it will try to crank into the missile in order to create that high G maneuver that will suck the last bit of energy out of it, hopefully on eliminating the potential of a hit here. So you can see we're just about out of fuel on those missiles. That aircraft is booking it. Yep, it looks like he's just gonna get away here. In this case, they did not engage our SAM crew, fired a little bit outside of their dynamic launch zone here. They should have waited until they got them a little bit closer. You can see our F-16. Now, in this example, it's a very clear that F-16 was fired on at a much shorter range, in which case they're not even bothering to turning around. They're just hitting the power as fast and as hard as they possibly can and putting themselves on the beam of the radar itself. Once the missiles get a little closer, they'll actually put the missiles on the beam, again, trying to do that high G maneuver to suck the last bit of energy out of that missile before it strikes. Keep in mind our missile is burning the whole time here. And look at all the work that missile has to do. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you are, does not strike the target.